Marcus, thank you very much for joining me today for my final project. You've helped me out massively. So just, just getting started, really, in terms of your football career, what age did you start playing? Um, I want to say probably about five years old. But before that, I was that was like when I started getting into like a team and stuff like that. But before that, I was just playing football whenever I had a chance. Whenever it was ball in front of me, I used to I used to play. I remember my my mom used to take me to my brother's games, and I used to more, be more bothered about playing with a football than than watching his game. Yeah, and obviously, you know, you, you followed in your brother's footsteps. You, you you signed for Newcastle Academy, but but then you left and obviously come to Middlesbrough. After you were released by Newcastle, when was the sort of first sort of mutterings that you that you heard that Middlesbrough might be interested to, to have you? It was probably about literally about two weeks after. I remember I was playing for my my district at the time, and there was a, a Middlesbrough scout there. Um, so I remember I played, and it was like, and he said he would come come watch it because they were speaking speaking to 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 someone I know and stuff. And then he watched the first 15 minutes. Then I remember after that, um, I got a call and then I got told to, to come down to, to come and train for with the team and stuff and have a, have a little trial. Yeah. And obviously, you know, just moving forward a little bit in your time with the academy. When you first joined the academy, what were the sort of players in, in the, possibly the higher age groups that you, you looked at and, and thought, well, you know, I'd like to sort of achieve what they're doing at the moment? Uh, it's probably Dale Fry. Dale Fry, when uh, when I was coming through, he was the first one who who broke into the into the first team when when I was around it, and he was like the, the aspect everyone wanted everyone wanted to be. So I was just, uh, just trying to build myself up towards that and and try and follow up in, in the like sim- a similar sort of pathway that that he's done. What what's got him his rewards into the first team? Yeah, and obviously you actually broke into the the first team after the summer where you know the club had spent quite a lot of money under under Gary Monk. What was that like, you know, that, that first season when you really broke in, you know, playing with, you know, the likes of Braithwaite, Tra- uh, Traore, they're both at Barcelona now. So I imagine that was uh, quite the experience training with some of those. Yeah, definitely. You knew straight away when you, when I remember my first training session, when I, when I got called over to training, you, you see the difference straight away and, and the demands, how, how different it is. But to train with players like that, you see, you see the, the top level players and, and what they're really capable of, where fans might not see it week in, week out, all the time. But when you're in training, you see the the little the little things what what they make look so 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 different in in any other players. But it was just great to to get that experience and and to train with them. Yeah, obviously you, your debut come against Scunthorpe that season, and when you saw the the squad announced and you saw your name on the team sheet and, and found out, what was that feeling like? I remember that day like it was yesterday. We had a, <laughs> A nighttime training session because we used to do if we had a nighttime game we used to train the, the night before instead of during the day and we had the lights down at the bottom and I remember coming to the meeting and then just sitting down just not thinking my name's gonna be on there and I was sitting down and then I just see on the left wing that that my name Tavernier and it's just a sort of surreal moment because as you grow up that's all you want to do you want to make your professional debut and and that was the chance I got. Yeah, and then of course after the debut in the Carabao Cup again, you, you get your first goal for the club. But away at Bournemouth, it was, wasn't it? You know, there's there's one feeling, of course, playing your first game. But I imagine scoring your first goal is even better, really. Yeah, I, I haven't quite had the the same feeling as that. Just it just felt like everything I've worked for with all the all the negative stuff what's happened to me, and then all the all the positives of coming to Middlesbrough, and then then believing in me, and it was just. Just a so surreal moment scoring my my first goal. Even though we didn't win, it was just still still a great feeling that that I got my first professional goal. Yeah, and then of course after after that first uh, goal, you, you then broke into the the side a little bit later on, and of course started playing uh, like league fixtures. Your first goal actually coming at a derby against Sunderland at home. I mean, we're talking about one feeling of making your debut, then one feeling of scoring your first goal, then to score in front of the Riverside against Sunderland. I imagine that was double the feeling again. Yeah, hundred percent. That was the the first game I had uh, been to with with a uh, with a derby day with with Middlesbrough, and it was unbelievable. The atmosphere is just when you go out for the warm up was was surreal, and it was just electric. And then to to score early on and 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 grab a great goal was was just unbelievable because. As you come through, you've played against um, the academies against Sunderland and Newcastle, and you know how much of a big game it is. 
So then to do it at a first team level as well, it just it's just even bigger. Yeah, obviously you went out on loan at the back end of that season after having a, a taste of obviously first team football. Um, were you a little bit, you know, frustrated given that you'd had a taste of it that obviously you then had to go out on loan? Yeah, a, a little bit because obviously I'm a I'm a Middlesbrough player. I wanted to to prove myself at at Middlesbrough, but the time the timing wasn't right, and I needed to go play play games in, in men's football, and that that's what I chose to do. And unfortunately, I had some injuries, but but I still learned a lot with my loan at MK Dons. Yeah, so obviously with that loan, what what sort of things did you learn? You know, dropping down a few divisions, but you know, what sort of things did you take from that? You just see how much how much um, commitment players have, and and how much they they have to to work hard to get out of that division because you see in the the championship and the the Premier League you get things nice and it's it's a better environment but when you drop down it it's it gets difficult for clubs so it was nice to open my eyes up and and see how other other clubs work and it was a great experience. Yeah, and obviously you started really establishing yourself uh, more so under Jonathan Woodgate and then again, you know, the, the season after and under Neil Warnock. I know Neil Warnock laughed and jokes about you, some of your mourning and, and things like that, but as a manager... Where did he get that from? I don't know where he gets it from. <laughs> uh, but yeah, as a, as a manager, how, how much did you enjoy playing under Neil Warnock? That was unbelievable. I've got to give him a lot of a lot of credit for, for the player I've become because as, a, as man management, he, he goes down to be... To one of the best players, they'll say, and it and it was great to to have him and experience him in and around in and around the club. As as you know, he's had a, a lot of success at different teams, and it was it was good to see how he works and how he gets the best out of his players. Yeah, and then obviously Chris Wilder coming in, and this season, you know, there's been a slight change of style with the team and a slight change in your role. I mean, how much have you enjoyed playing under him, and obviously the the new position that you're playing in as well. Yeah, I've loved every minute of it. I feel like he believes in me, believes in me a lot, and he's he's given me a, a massive amount of confidence in in my game, and keeps reminding me of that. So I've I've loved every part of him of being here, and hopefully it can just continue. Yeah, and and just finally, you know, over the years, Middlesbrough have produced an awful lot of players. You know, at times it's been like a conveyor belt of player after player, but. Why do you think the academy for for a club of Middlesbrough size has been so successful? I feel like just the philosophy around around the club is just just great with the the academy. They know how to to manage players and how to develop them in, into the player they they need. They don't um, focus on just just the certain styles. They they adapt to to how that player plays and and they and then they work on that into into what they want. And it just produces into the first team first team player that they need. And and you can see that with the players that we've got. Yeah, I know I said finally, but we'll ask one more question because there's been a little bit of debate um, on social media. I, for one, can't get my head around it. Of course, you, you scored a, a brilliant goal um, against Peterborough. I, I saw a few... I don't, I don't want to hear if it's going to be a cross. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I, I don't for one minute believe that was a cross, but I, I just want you to clear that up. That That is just purely you having a great shot on, on target rather than some sort of cross which some people try to make out on social media I know I know beforehand I used to shoot too much and now I'm passing it a bit too much so that's what people may have thought but now it's definitely a shot 100% yeah well thank you uh, Marcus for, for joining me and thank you very much for speaking as well